Lesson 10.2c, Evaluating Real-World Expressions. We can evaluate expressions to solve real-world problems. In the back of our textbook, after the index, we'll find a page that has a table of measures and formulas. In mathematics, a formula is a combination of symbols used to state a rule or principle. If we have a rectangle, A, is equal to LW is the formula for the area of a rectangle. It's the length times the width. An algebraic expression contains one or more variables and may contain operation symbols such as a plus or minus, parentheses for multiplication, fraction bars for division, but no equal symbol. 1 and 8 tenths C plus 32 is an expression. There's no equal sign. A formula is an equation. Equations do contain equal symbols. Here we have it as an expression with no equal sign, and here we have it as an equation because there's an equal sign. This is degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1 and 8 tenths C plus 32. Because we have an equal symbol here, this is an equation, and it's a formula to convert degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. LWH is an algebraic expression with three variables. That's length, width, and height. To find volume, we multiply length times width times height. We have a length of 4, a width of 5. We multiply them together, and we have 4 times 5, which is 20. That means the first bottom layer has 20 unit cubes, and its height is 2. We just multiply the 20 times 2. We know there's 40 cube units here. We learned about that in 5th grade math 11.10. If you don't remember it, it's linked in the description so you can watch it quickly. If you're confused. A cube is a rectangular prism with six congruent faces. This means its length, width, and height will be the same number. So its length is 2, its width is 2, its height is 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 2. We have 2 raised to the third power. And 2 raised to the third power can be read as 2 cubed. It makes a cube. Since we can find the area of a flat surface by using length times width, LW, and a cube has six congruent faces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we can use 6 x raised to the second power for the surface area of a cube. That's the entire surface area. We have this side as some number x and this side as some number x. The sides are the same length, they're congruent, so we have x squared, x raised to the second power. We learned about that in fourth grade math 11.7. .7. Don't know if you remember that. Length times width. So each face is x squared, or x raised to the second power. So if we have six of them, we have six times x squared. And x cubed, x raised to the third power, gives the volume of the cube, length, width, and height, x, x, and x. They're all congruent, all the sides. So we have x times x times x. It's equal to x raised to the third power. And we use a script L for a lowercase l so we don't get it confused with a 1. So here it's telling us to use 6x squared to find the surface area and x cubed to find the volume of a cube with a side length of 5 centimeters. So remember, a cube has all of its sides are congruent to each other. And we substitute 5 for x in the expressions and we evaluate. We have a capital S for surface area, and we have 6x squared, so we have 6 times 5 squared. So be careful, we use parentheses to show multiplication. So 5 squared is 5 times 5, that means we have 6 times 25, that's equal to 150 centimeters squared. And our answers are in centimeters squared or centimeters cubed. Notice that? For volume, we have a capital V, and it's equal to 5 cubed.
instead of x cubed, we put 5 in there, we substitute it in. That means we have 5 times 5 times 5. That means we have 25 times 5. That's 125 centimeters cubed. And don't worry if this is hard for you to remember, because we're going to learn more about surface area and volume coming up in module 15. Right now, the important thing is that you know how to substitute the value into the expression in place of the variable. Have you noticed that the variables in the textbook are printed in italics? Italics lean a little bit to the right. They lean where regular type doesn't. The algebraic expression 1 and 8 tenths C plus 32 will help us convert a temperature given in Celsius, C, to Fahrenheit. The temperature in Madrid, Spain was 25 degrees Celsius today. What temperature is that in degrees Fahrenheit? We substitute 25 for C, that's the degrees Celsius, so we have 1 and 8 tenths times 25. We can use scratch paper to do our multiplication on the side. We get 45. Remember, there's one decimal hop in the equation, so we're going to have one decimal hop in our product. So we have 45. Now we have to add the 32, and that gives us 77. We know that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not a little zero exponent. That's the degree symbol, okay? The expression 3 and 3 tenths m gives the number of feet in meters, m. Evaluate this expression for m is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and use our results to fill in the table. So m is the number of meters. If we have 0 meters, we have 0 feet. If we have 1 meter, we have 3 and 3 tenths feet. We would just do 3 and 3 tenths times 1. If we have 2 meters, we multiply 3 and 3 tenths times 2, we get 6 and 6 tenths meters. If we multiply 3 and 3 tenths times 3 for 3 meters, we get 9 and 9 tenths feet. If we multiply it by 4, we get 13 and 2 tenths feet. As we go up by one more meter, our feet go up by three and three tenths more. Do you remember from last year that a perimeter is the distance around a closed plane figure? It's like a fence around a yard. We can use the expression 2L plus 2W to find the perimeter of a rectangle. We have two times the length and two times the width. So we're going to have 2 times 4 plus 2 times 2. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 times 2 is 4. We have a perimeter of 12 feet. We substitute the numbers into the expression, and we multiply, add, and then solve. And because we have these numbers here, we need to use parentheses, don't we? When we substitute the value in for the variable. So now we're going to move on to lesson 10.3, and there was so much to cover. I broke it into seven parts. So beware, these are each going to be little parts that are going to be easier to understand. I really hope my math lessons have been helping you, and I hope you have a really great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.